Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. This is Insights into Entertainment, Episode Zero, kicking off the entertainment. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hello. This is our first podcast in this series, so I think it would be worthwhile for us to talk a little bit about what the podcast is about. What are we going to be talking about? What's the format of the show? Well, I, I believe that our format, or our topics, will be all things entertainment, from movies to television to things to do, um, you know, comic cons and ren fairs and entertainment as a whole. So pop culture, movies, TVs, music, award shows I'm sure we'll talk about. And uh, we'll do it in uh, kind of a question and answer format. Sure. And uh, just a general discussion. The first topic, or the first thing I wanted to discuss today, is not a specific type of entertainment, but how people consume their entertainment today. I did a little research at a website called Statista.com, and there is a uh, survey for the number of weekly hours of media usage from 2017. The categories are kind of limited. So we have smartphones. We have TV, radio, TV-connected devices, PC, and tablet. Now, this doesn't talk about service providers like, you know, Hulu or okay. Netflix or anything. Just how they're watching it. Just how they're watching okay. it. Okay, okay. Um, of those that I talked about, what of those do you use to consume your media? Almost all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> Um, well, I think primarily for us in, in our household, it's it's mostly TV. Um, for our daughter, it would be her smartphone, um, as well as TV, usually at the same time. Yeah, she does do multiple <laughs> channels does, at once. She does multiple channels at the same time. Um, if we're traveling, then it's usually an iPad type, uh, a tablet device along with a phone. Sometimes it's a computer, you know, as well. So I, I think we definitely check all of the boxes. So of the mediums that I've spoke of, what do you think is the most used? I think now in this day and age, I would probably say a computer or, and or a smartphone, just because a lot of people seem to be cutting the cord so a lot of people might not even have a television anymore because they might not have you know service through a normal uh cable system so they're probably using more so internet access to access their their entertainment so it's probably more so on their laptop or you know within you know on their smartphone The interesting thing about the survey is they split the survey results between millennials and uh, all other adults. (laughs) Of course. Because millennials really are a species all in and of themselves. Yes, they definitely are. And And Generation X doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. (laughs) But in this survey, uh, millennials rank the smartphone as their preferred medium. Okay, I can see that. They would spend 19 hours and 39 minutes on average on their smartphone consuming media. And that's per week? That is per week. Okay, I was going to say during the day. It's... No, well, they're, no, yeah. And they're not sleeping. That, yeah, that, that's a lot of consumption. <laughs> the highest for other adults was still television at 34 minutes, uh, 34 hours, 32 minutes. Okay. So that's a kind of an interesting split between the age groups there. Mm -hmm. The television comes in second for 
millennials at 19 hours and 18 minutes. So it's they still use traditional media. Right. So, so it's it's very close between a it smartphone is. and a TV. But the next closest for your other adults is the smartphone at at almost half of what they would consume regular television well, at its 17 hours. I can see that cuz older people, you know, sitting on a couch, you know, still have a television. You know, and then probably they're using their phone more so if they're traveling or at an appointment. That would make sense. That, yeah. you know. I know that's what I do if I'm sitting, oh, for an hour waiting <laughs> for a doctor's yeah. appointment. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, maybe I'm just old, but I don't consume <laughs> the majority of my media on my smartphone at this point. Because it's to me, it's too small. It's too media. small. Right. For you, you use your tablet. More so than correct if you're not watching it on television. And I'll PC. use and I will use my my smartphone for mm -hmm. media consumption at lunch if I'm listening to a podcast right. or watching a podcast right. or something. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm trying to plug podcasts or anything. But, no, we would never do that. Um, <laughs> what I thought was interesting was tablets were at the bottom of the list for everybody. And I wonder if it's more so because tablets, you don't see as many people using them, I think, as you used to. I think because the smartphone kind of took over. Well, because they've gotten was, to the point that they're phablets now. They're just so big that right. what you were using a tablet for for media before, you get from a phone. Right, now. exactly. Where, you know, just the other day I was looking for something and I found one of my original <laughs> cell phones. And it's this cute little, little tiny thing. And I'm like, oh my God, how did I even use this? I, I almost felt like it was a kid phone, yeah. you know, putting it up to my, hello, you know. And, and, you know, obviously you didn't really text on it because... It wasn't a keyboard. It was, you know, just a regular keypad. Right. You know, A, 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 B, B, B. <laughs> it just didn't make sense. So I could see when tablets, you know, I even remember, you know, when I first got my first little tablet, you know, this the phone that I had was okay, but, you know, it was just better to have it on a, a larger screen. But now, like you said, more of the smartphones are much bigger or they're that in between of a smartphone and a tablet, yeah. you know, the, the notes or... Well, and this is a direct correlation to the drop in tablet sales as well. I mean, right. Even Apple is now struggling. Right. You know, they commanded the, the tablet market mm -hmm. for years after the iPad came out, and they're struggling to reinvent themselves to, to maintain dominance there. And, you know, three hours of media consumption a week by the millennials on a tablet is devastating to mm -hmm. the tablet market. Well, I even think, you know, what was it, a couple of holidays ago when I picked up that one generic tablet to kind of replace the other tablet that I had, right. you know, well, it was like $50 or something. And it's an I think Android tablet. It was an Android, clarify. right. It was an Android tablet because I'm an Android user as opposed to everybody else in the household who's and Apple. We, we won't hold that against <laughs> you. Having that... Having that inferior perspective on the podcast is right. Helpful. We we don't want to we don't want to set precedent here, <laughs> but I think maybe I used it for a week, and that yeah. was it. And I never went back to it. It's still sitting upstairs in the bedroom. Yeah. And it was one of those. Eh, why did I even buy it? So for me, it's just easier. You know, even when we go on vacation, as that'll be one of our topics, I'm sure uh, later on. I'll probably have my laptop, but I probably won't use it as much as I would use my phone. It's just easier. It's that all-in-one device. Right. I have everything there. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, the the cell phones today have finally reached the point of convergence that we were looking for from back in the 90s, back in the age of your Palm Pilot, mm -hmm. where you Absolutely. would have a Palm Pilot or a personal organizer. Mm -hmm. You would have a phone. You would have a camera. Mm -hmm. And... Back then, we always wanted this converged device right. where everything was in one. Mm -hmm. And it started merging that way in the late 90s, early 2000s. But your cameras weren't high enough quality. Your screens weren't big enough or high enough resolution. And I think finally we've gotten to the point that, you know, the Samsung Galaxy S9 that you have, mm -hmm. the iPhone 10 that I have, it's a form factor that is ideal for media consumption. Absolutely. And... And creation, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can 
take of you know photos on there like you could on professional cameras from 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, I think that that kind of answers our question when it comes to why smartphones are so popular for media consumption. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the amount of time that we spend looking at different types of media. So Nielsen came out with a uh, survey of average time spent per adult 18 and older. So we're not breaking out the millennials from this one here. And this came from July of 2018. And the number one media source here that they're talking about on average is live television at four hours and 10 minutes a day. Now this is per day. Okay. You know my stance on live television. TV. I absolutely <laughs> he hate. He hates it. I hate watching live TV, and I refuse to at some points. To the point of, if we're going to watch something that's being broadcast live, I'll watch it 15 minutes later than it starts, just so I don't have to watch commercials and I can fast forward through commercials. Of course, now that's devastating if I ever try to sell commercials on the podcast. Right, because people are going to just fast forward that. Now. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll 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 come up with a way to get around that. Right. Exactly. So. TV, live TV, outweighs the next category by almost a factor of two, and that's app and webs on uh, web apps uh, on smartphones, which speaks to the previous mm-hmm. uh, survey. So these these kind of go hand in hand with the Statista survey that we talked mm-hmm. about, where smartphones and TV are the are the number ones. What surprised me was radio. The fact that people still spend almost two hours a day listening to radio. Well, think about the average person's commute. Now, the and that's the other thing. When I went and did a little bit of research, I found the average commute was just over an hour. Okay. So that does make sense that Mm -hmm. if you're commuting both ways. I personally tend to listen to podcasts when I'm on the road. So I don't usually listen to live Mm -hmm. radio. And that's... If I'm on the road for a long duration, I'm going to hop radio station regions. Right, right. So instead of hitting that scan button on the radio, mm-hmm. right. I'll fire up a two-hour podcast and listen to that, or I'll listen to an audio book or something. See, and I think for me, I've always found that if I try listening to a podcast or you know, uh, an audio book or something like that, I tend to not pay attention as much to it which is probably good if you're driving right so that's good i'm not a distracted driver yeah so i think for me personally i rather have music because there are times when you know or listening to the radio where i don't even remember that a song was just on like you know i'm driving along and i hear the tail end of the song and i'm like oh i didn't even realize that song so it's just background on. noise for you yeah for me it's really yeah. you know and and also the same thing when i'm at work i have pandora playing from the moment i log on to my computer at work until the moment i i leave well that doesn't qualify as radio in this survey well no not for that but my number would be a lot higher since i'm at work for a nine hour day so i'd i'd skew our our future our future sponsors would love to hear hear that you're listening (laughs) to it for nine hours so remember pandora we have one listener that'll listen to your commercials for nine hours a day right So after radio, we're back to app and web on a tablet, which is down to 47 minutes. Not a big shocker, though. I was kind of surprised it it ranked Mm -hmm. that as high. Um, Internet on a computer was 39 minutes. And and I guess people just don't sit at their computers to watch, you know, entertainment videos. Mm, I guess. Uh, You know, YouTube and Netflix are so popular that you get them on other mediums. Right, you get them on your phone. So, again... You know, I sit at my computer to do bills. That's really all that I'm using my right. computer for at this point because everything else, and heck, I can even pay my bills from my phone, but it's just I like to see my Excel spreadsheet or, yeah. you know, on a bigger. And that's the thing. You know, like, I'm, I, I don't use my phone nearly as much as, as other people do today. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, but I'm. I'm an anachronism when it comes to true that. but i know there'll be times when you know i'm not at home or i'm upstairs in the bedroom or something and i realize oh did i forget to pay a certain bill or something and i can go onto the banking app you know from my phone and i can see oh i paid it or i didn't or 
you know, if we're out and about and, you know, really what what's, you know, another 20 minutes going to buy me waiting to get home to pay something, but that accessibility of being able to do it on the go, just like, you know, for work, I have to log on to a system to put in my vacation days and my sick days, and I can access it from my phone. I don't have to be on my work computer. So right. there's that ease of, you know, I might not choose to do it that way, but I have that option to do it that way sure. if I want to. Sure. Well, the, la the next two that we have in here kind of make me feel like I am a bit of a dinosaur. The next three, really. <laughs> you know, we've got time-shifted TV, which is the only way that I'll watch TV. We have inter internet-connected devices, which is the only way that I really watch anything on TV through my Apple TV. Correct. And then we've got game consoles. So between those, they make up less than an hour mm. or just over an hour of, of consumption a day. At that rate. And then the lowest one that we have for entertainment consumption is your DVD or Blu-ray. I'm not really sure how it can only be six minutes in an average because that's a really short movie. Yeah. I mean, maybe people are just watching the bonus clips. Maybe they're just watching bonus clips at that point. And realizing that they don't like it, so they send it back to Redbox or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but Wherever they're getting it from. I think that's really a testament to another piece of dying technology there. Mm. Um, but on average, I thought it was interesting that people are consuming about 11 hours of entertainment a day. Now, you figure with an eight-hour working day, maybe, say, nine-hour working day with commute, that's a lot of time people are consuming entertainment media. Well, I could, I could definitely see, you know, like, for myself, in the morning, we have the radio playing while we're getting ready. So that's a half hour just before we're leaving the house. We normally don't put the news on, but I know that there are people that put the news on while they're getting ready in the morning or will watch the news while they have breakfast at home. We, as our family, you know, the hours that we work and our schedule, we don't eat breakfast Monday through Friday at home where there are people that, you know, would sit down. So I could see having a 45-minute TV time at home. And then again, if your commute is half hour, 45 minutes... You have that much time listening to the radio on your way. And then when you're at work consuming, you know, there are people that depending on what their job is, maybe they're during their lunch break, they're watching a half hour show, you know, during their lunch break or their 15 minute break, you know. And then when you get home, some people put the TV on as soon as they walk in the door and maybe they're not even really consuming it either. It's just, again... The background, sure. you know, the background noise. So. Well, and you give a good example of the fact that, you know, you're listening to some type of media mm -hmm. for eight hours, nine hours at work. So right. I, I guess there's a lot of people that do that. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of people at my office that listen to it as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I happen to stream playlists from our own media server mm -hmm. at home. So technically, I guess I am as well. Right. So, very interesting statistics on how people consume their media and, and how it's changing over time. So, let's switch gears a little bit here. Okay. We're, we're the Saturday before Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl 53. We would really be neglect in our responsibility as podcasters of an entertainment podcast if we didn't spend some time talking about the Super Bowl. Sure. Uh, this year, it's the New England Patriots versus the Los Angeles Rams. Should I even ask who you want to win? Anybody but the Patriots. And I think that's generally <laughs> the feeling most of America has, except unless you live in New unless England. Unless you live in New England or are from New England. So, uh, Yuki and Ver uh, Veronica, I'm so sorry. Uh, I would be perfectly happy if New England won, if the promise of Tom Brady retiring was attached to that. I would be happy with that as well. Well, uh, I think after last year's loss that, you know. He should have retired he last year retired after the anyway. Eagles, you know, humiliated him. Right. But we um, won't talk about that because we are from the Philadelphia region. Exactly. And since it is the Super Bowl, we're not actually going to talk about the sports aspect of it because... 75% of America probably doesn't care about that. Right. We're going to talk about the halftime show and, more importantly, the commercials. The commercials. <laughs> so, the halftime show this year is yeah. Maroon 5. There's been some controversy right. around 
Maroon 5 and some of their lack of support, uh, disappointment and lack of support of, of Colin Kaepernick and his stance with mm-hmm. kneeling in the NFL. Right. Which um, I don't want to get into too much on the controversy, but I think they've sort of dealt with that in as tasteful a manner as they possibly could given the circumstances. It's a very volatile subject Mm -hmm. uh, and it tends to bring out very passionate debates in people. Absolutely. But I think it's one of these things where they recognize that they're entertainers, they're there to do a job and and they're not there to make, you know, political statements. And they're not. And that's, I think the most important thing is they're not coming down on one side or the other. Right. They're just... Switzerland. Um, yes. Whereas you have other entertainers who are very polarized one way or the mm-hmm. other. And I think having someone who's going to come in and be professional about why they're there, I think is a tribute to Maroon 5 and their management. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have anything else to add to the halftime show? No. I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, how they they do. Um, you know, I tend to prefer the more showy aspects. Katy Perry was one that was a favorite because it was, you know, like a very a big production. Yeah. Whereas ones where it's more of a rock band, you know, they just come out and do their song. It's like, kind of like like when the Rolling Stones come out and fall asleep on stage. Yeah. You know, you know not that it's it's bad, but it's not. You know, okay. But I enjoy Maroon 5. I've actually seen them in concert a couple of times, so I'm sure I'll know all of the songs. So it's always a nice little mini concert to watch. Right. Um, You know, I know there's usually always some surprise guest that comes out. Um, So I've actually tried not looking online to see... So one Any thing, of that, so. one thing that I saw, and I just saw a headline, and I didn't read the article, was there's some kind of SpongeBob song or something, or SpongeBob tribute or okay. something that our daughter would like that because she's a SpongeBob exactly. fan. But I didn't read if there was some kind of uh, petition or something to get them to do this specific song. Oh, okay. And I to wasn't get, familiar oh, with okay. the song itself. Yeah, I, I don't know, know if it came from the SpongeBob movie or or what. No idea. I don't know. Yeah. So the big thing about any Super Bowl are the commercials. So this year, there's a lot of commercials, like there is every year. Right. And the commercials had a whopping price tag of $5.1 to $5.3 million per 30-second spot. The most ever. That's insane. I'm sorry. There is so much more that you could do in life. <laughs> with, there is with that much money that and and what's funny is you've got some really obscure <sighs> ones. Like you've got avocados from Mexico will be advertising during the Super Bowl. Okay. You have the 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 standard ones. You have Budweiser. Right. You have Doritos. Uh, you have Michelob. Mm-hmm. Um, Pepsi, obviously. But Yellowtail, I don't know what Yellowtail is. Um, I'm guessing it's an alcoholic beverage a, of some sort. I believe it's a wine. Okay. Unless it's a different Yellowtail than... You have a, a an ad that's already been circulating the internet from Devour talking about they're depicting a food addiction to a porn addiction. Interesting. And apparently okay. they've had some racy comments about that. Okay. You have Bumble. I don't know who who Bumble is. I in her court. Yeah, don't know. Probably a pro female. That's what it sounds like. Thing. Uh, you have. Bubbly. I'm thinking that's going to be one that's going to like. I'll watch it and like get all teary eyed. Probably. And, yeah. Because you know, I'm a sap when it comes to. Yeah. Commercials like that. Yes, you are. Um, you have. Can I have a buble? From Bubbly, of which I'm guessing is another um, yeah. alcoholic beverage that's featuring Michael Bublé. I was going to say, is it Michael Bublé? It is Michael Bublé. Uh, bon and Viv. Don't know who that is. 
Okay. Uh, but what what strikes me is, I mean, you're looking at even at a minimum, you're looking at five point one million. Oh, that's just insane. That's just to be there. That's not even the cost of the production of the commercial itself. Oh, absolutely. And also, and and the other thing too is, well, how many of these commercials are you know how they do you know like one of part three right the lead up to it right like there might be four commercials within the whole series sure. you know so is it i'm guessing you know it's five million a shot so yeah. if you have three you're paying 15 15 million, million dollars to advertise I mean, granted, it's a lot of eyes on your. Well, I was just gonna say, product. isn't the Super Bowl the most watched? Yeah. Event. Well, and that's the thing. You know. All the all the uh, commercials that that we have up in front of us here, these are ones that have already been published and leaked to the internet. And that was the other thing that I was gonna say was that just it's only been a couple of years that they've actually been doing this, where by the time the Super Bowls even started. You've already seen these commercials, or you know they've either already run on TV in some facet, or you can just go on YouTube and find them. So by the time you know the the anticipation of oh what's the commercial going to be is kind of like oh I saw that one already exactly or, oh yeah. that's not as good, but I know for me I try not to watch them so that, <laughs> so I do get the enjoyment well, and, and while that's watching. The thing. I mean the Super Bowl has become. An entertainment extravaganza, less for the sporting aspect oh, and more for the commercial aspect of it. Absolutely, you um, know, and which and the party of, aspect, and, yeah, you know, and given some of the lackluster games that we've seen mm -hmm. in the past ten years, right. where they've just been complete snore fest, the one thing people have to look forward to are the commercials, right? Or if they're it. you know in a football pool, like. We would never <laughs> join football pools because gambling is illegal. Right. Well, we we live in New Jersey. Um, yeah. Well, that is true. <laughs> Everything's illegal in New Jersey. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a that was a lot, and that's not even all. Of them. That's you know we're looking at about twenty ads here. Right. Which makes you know a two hour game a very long game when you're trying to squeeze so many ads into it. Absolutely. Um, but and I think it's being broadcast on CBS. You can hardly blame the network. For not trying to cram as many ads as possible when you're getting 5.1 million in oh, middles out of it. Absolutely. But it should prove to be an interesting, yeah, interesting extravaganza. I think that pretty much concludes what we were going to talk about today. Did you have any closing words for us, my dear? No, I don't. I think this went well. Okay. Uh, next week we will be broadcasting or on location, recording at least <laughs> on location. Uh, from the happiest place on earth, or somewhere thereabouts. Somewhere nearby. Yes. So Close by. Until then, thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Michelle, for being with us today. Thank you, Joe, for having me. Uh, and that is all. Mm -hmm.